Jack, from the very beginning, always used to say, Billy was a user. I know what Billy is and what Billy isn't. Billy middle class, he calls himself. Billy denies he's homosexual, but I first picked him up in a gay bathhouse. Mr. Redanti is a sadist, an alcoholic, a big spender of other people's money. He tried to interfere in my work. He's a braggart and a liar, a social embarrassment, an embezzler, and a thief. And Aside from the 20,000 he recently appropriated from me, he's stolen six spiral notebooks <laughs> containing 15 years' work on answered prayers, which is the major reason I'm having trouble finishing it. So you can see why I sincerely hope that my friend with the baseball bat gets a shot at him. stopped drinking. If I stopped drinking <laughs> and everything was straight, and if I really just can't get him out of my system, maybe we could still have a life together. Right? Absent friends. <laughs> Oh, go ahead and do it. <laughs> Operator, hi. This is 7561075, and I'd like a telegram charged to that number, and it's to go to Mr. and Mrs. William Paley. Now, make that just Mrs. Paley. Indian Hill Road, Brookville, Long Island. And the message is... I'm so sad and lonely for you, as positively unchristian, that you should remain so unforgiving to a poor sinner over the halls. Halls. Short for holidays. <laughs> now, where was that? Over the halls. I love you. No, that's the message. What? No, I love you. And I miss you. And that's the solemn truth, babe. Sign true, T I U. No, sweet, I don't want you to read all of that back. No. <laughs> That's all right. That's, oh, my God. So. So. In for a penny. <laughs> in for a pound. <laughs> Yes, this is 7561075, and I'd like a telegram charge to that number. It's to go to Lady Nancy Keith. Uh, would you spell that first name, please? L-A-D-Y. <laughs> Lady Nancy Keith, K-E-I-T-H, 100 Mary All Road, New Milford, Connecticut, 06776. And the message is, Merry Christmas, Big Mama. I've decided to forgive you. Signed, true, T-R-U. Would you read all of that back, please? Okay. It goes to Lady, L-A-D-Y, Nancy Keith, K-E-I-T-H, 100 Marial Road, New Milford, Connecticut, 06776. The message is, Merry Christmas, Big Mama. I've decided to forgive you. Signed, true, T-R-U. Is that all? Actually, that's quite a lot, sugar. Excuse me for asking, but are you Truman Capote? 
Why, you clever thing. <laughs> However did you guess? She's the one they call Slim, isn't she? Slim Keith? Well, she once was slim, that is. Well, I think she's acting ridiculous. I just want to say I think they all are. A bunch of real assholes. And you want to know something? They ought to be honored you wrote about them. I read Breakfast at Tiffany's and in Cold Blood, and you're a wonderful writer. Oh, my God. Well, just thank you from the bottom of my heart. What is your name, hon? Judy. Judy Cornblue. Well, a glorious Christmas to you, Judy. You too, Mr. Capote. <laughs> <laughs> Call me true. <laughs> hey, how about that? Well, a glorious Christmas to you too, true. Oh, thank you. Sometimes there's God. <laughs> The truth is I've been fighting off maybe the worst case of the mean reds I've ever had in my life. I'm not saying a lot. I wake up some mornings feeling like I've been snake bit, and I know what I'm talking about. When I was eight years old, I was bitten by a cotton mouth, water moccasin. And the scariest spot was they killed a bunch of chickens and ripped them open. And the hot chicken flesh was supposed to draw out the poison, which I guess it did, because the chicken meat turned green, and I didn't. <laughs> but I sure enough felt as if I'd been snake bit. <laughs> My God, I didn't bomb Pearl Harbor. I'm not an unkind person. I'm not judgmental. I'm a generous and caring friend. And no matter what they say, a loyal one. And I'm not a cheat. And I'm very, very honest. I mean, Lord, even as a child. Well, once, I stepped over the line once. I, I committed one serious crime when I was eight years old. What I did, what my crime was, I stole my grandmother's necklace. I stole it to pay Mrs. Ferguson. Mrs. Ferguson was a fancy laundress, probably the only white laundress in New Orleans. And Mrs. Ferguson was said to have magical powers. It was said and believed by many, certainly by me, that she could tame errant husbands and force proposals from reluctant suitors and Riku squandered fortunes. In short, she was a witch <laughs> who could make wishes come true. And I had a secret, a secret wish, one that I was afraid to tell anybody. Couldn't imagine what their reaction would be. But I wanted to tell my wish to Mrs. Ferguson. I felt I had to, but how could I pay her? What could I give her? Well, as it turns out, what I could give her was my grandmother's necklace. It was a dazzling yellow stone dangling from a gold chain. And my grandmother attached great value to it because her own grandfather had won it in a card game in Colorado. <laughs> and when Mrs. Ferguson first laid eyes on it, her ignorant moon eyes glowed. And that's the fact. They truly glowed. And the deal she offered me was my wish for my grandmother's necklace. If I were caught, I'd never have been forgiven. But I had to have it. And I snuck into my grandmother's room, you know, and I stole that necklace. And I just ran, just 